The sea can be a dangerous place. Even with modern ships and modern technology, disasters can still happen. Collision, fire, and foundering can all lead to abandonment. When human lives are at risk, all seafarers owe it to themselves and their colleagues to understand their responsibilities. This series has been produced to supplement your ship's personal survival manuals, including the SOLAS Chapter 3 training manual and STCW requirements. This video looks at life rafts and open lifeboats. The big advantage of davit-launched life rafts is that the evacuees get away from the ship dry. While they are mustering, the launching party, as designated by the muster list, prepares for embarkation. First, the side rails are made ready. Then the first life raft is prepared. The life raft securing straps are released. Then the davit is prepared. Each manufacturer's davits differ and their instructions should always be consulted. But the basic principles and launching sequences are common to all. Having made sure that all is clear over the ship's side and around the deck preparation area, the winch operator moves the davit to the position for inflation. The life raft shackle is pulled out of the canister and the davit fall is hooked to it. It is essential to check that the hook mechanism is properly closed. Then the painter and bowsing lines are pulled out. Sometimes a separate line for inflation is provided, but here the painter is used to inflate the raft. All these lines are secured to appropriate secure points on the deck. Deck cleats are usually provided for this. Plenty of slack is left. The life raft is then allowed to swing out under the control of the preparation party. Once it is in position, the life raft is inflated by pulling on the line. Once inflation is complete, excess gas is released, so inflation will have finished before the noise of gas stops. When fully inflated, the life raft is pulled in tight on the bowsing lines and secured to the embarkation point, ready for boarding. Before anyone embarks, a crew member must check the life raft for any leaks or defects. If there are any faults, or if the life raft is not fully inflated, it will need to be released. Once it has been checked, the bridge is informed that the life raft is ready. The order is then given for evacuation. The evacuees are then told to board the life raft. Before each person enters, they must remove their footwear. Any sharp objects, such as pens or brooches, that could damage the life raft or other people in it, should be taken from them. Two crew members sit at the entrance and instruct the evacuees to position themselves around the sides of the raft, directing them to left and right in sequence. Inside, the evacuees sit facing the centre, always sitting down as far outboard as possible next to the previous occupant. No one must ever sit on the buoyancy chambers. 
Once the life raft is loaded, the painter and bowsing lines will normally be released and thrown in the raft. It is extremely important to ensure that none of the lines catch on obstructions on the ship's side, as the life raft could be tipped up or damaged during lowering. These life rafts can be lowered from inside, but this method is only used for the last life raft. The life raft preparation party lowers the life rafts using the winch brake. When the life raft is in the water, the life raft leader pulls the red lanyard that releases the hook, leaving the life raft to drift free. There are some variations between different types. Consult the manufacturer's instruction for the life rafts fitted to your ship. On board the ship, the winch operator raises the fall manually. There is an electric motor, but in case of power failure, the hook must be able to be raised manually, and this method is used in this exercise. While the first life raft is being lowered, another is prepared. Passengers in one crew in raft one. Marine evacuation systems also offer dry shod boarding of an inflatable survival craft. The evacuees assemble at their muster stations. Then the slide and platform are inflated. System deployment by one individual must be possible. At the same time, the life rafts are also launched and inflated by the preparation party. Under the control of the evacuation team, who are provided with survival suits, the passengers then go down the slide to the platform, where they board their allocated life rafts. Another recently developed system is the Marin Arc Marine Evacuation System. This also provides a means of dry evacuation of passengers and crew. When the system is deployed, it comes out of its housing and tilts over. The life rafts then drop into the water. As the life rafts leave the stowage, inflation starts automatically. At the same time, the chutes unfold behind the life rafts. The life rafts are held to the side of the ship by bowsing lines attached to wire winch ropes. These bowsing lines are tensioned by an electrically powered winch. When the system is ready, team members position themselves at the top and the bottom of the chutes to direct the flow of evacuees. As each evacuee arrives at the entrance to the chute, they must remove their shoes and glasses. Once in the life raft, the evacuees are helped up, got away from the bottom of the chute and directed to their places by the life raft team. Evacuation will not begin until the ship's master gives the order. These types of systems are often found on ferries and passenger ships where they must be capable of evacuating all the passengers within 30 minutes. If your ship has such a system, you must study the manuals and training aids carefully, as exercises with these systems can only be carried out rarely. Their big advantage is that they offer dry boarding of the survival craft. Evacuees who are dry are much less likely to suffer from exposure than those who are wet. It is not so easy to avoid getting wet with the throw overboard type of life raft. These are mounted in racks and sometimes they must be carried to the ship's side. Like all life rafts, they're fitted with a hydrostatic release and a weak link to enable the life raft to release, come to the surface and then inflate should the vessel sink. The ship's side rails are removed. 
life jackets should be worn while this is done. Then the painter is securely attached to a strong point on the ship. This will not be necessary if the life rafts are mounted at the throw overboard position as the painter is already secured to a strong point. The Senhouse slip or release button is then operated and the container carried to the ship's side. Having checked that all is clear below, it is thrown into the water. The painter is then hauled in. When free pulling ends, a strong pull is given. This triggers the inflation mechanism. Once it is fully inflated, the life raft leader climbs down the ladder, holding the painter under his arm. As he descends, the life raft is pulled towards the ship's side. At the bottom of the ladder, he uses the painter to secure it alongside. This may be difficult in rough weather. He then boards the craft and checks it for leaks. Once satisfied that it is all right, embarkation can begin. The objective is to enter the life raft dry if possible. Evacuees should climb down the ladder and step in through the entrance. In an emergency, they can jump the last one or two meters only. They should land with bent knees, putting as little weight as possible on the canopy. Never jump onto the canopy itself, as this will damage it and injure those sitting beneath. Throughout the evacuation, the life raft leader must check that the raft is not damaged by rubbing against the ship's side particularly on the lee side. Once it is loaded, the painter is cut as far away from the raft as possible. The raft then drifts free. In any survival craft, the first priority is to get away from the ship's side. In calm conditions, as well as rowing or paddling, it may be necessary to weight down the sea anchor or drogue throw it out of the raft and haul the raft towards it. The anchor is retrieved and the process repeated. On some life rafts, deployment of the first drogue is automatic. If the raft is on the windward side of the ship, the sea anchor will hold it and the ship will drift away. Controlling the direction of travel of a life raft is not easy. The wind will always be the governing factor. Once away from the ship, the life raft should join up with other survival craft. The rescue boat and any other motor lifeboats will lend assistance. Great care is needed when towing life rafts. If the raft inflates upside down or capsizes, it can be righted. With a large life raft, it is not always easy for one person to do this on their own, in which case two people acting together will more easily be able to write it. The best procedure is for the evacuees to take hold of the writing strap and climb onto the raft. Then, while standing on the gas cylinders, haul on the writing strap using their own body weight. As the raft writes, it is important to appreciate both the position of the gas cylinders and that an air pocket may exist under the raft once it is righted. The first two into the life raft should be the fittest and ablest present, as once inside, they will be able to help others to board. To enter a two-stage approach is best. First, get onto the life raft step or ramp and then tip into the life raft itself. Being helped to enter is much easier than doing it on your own. Those inside must make certain that they themselves do not fall into the water. 
Initially, they should use the buoyancy of the survivor's life jackets to help them, bobbing him or her up and down in the water before hauling them up onto the life raft step and then into the life raft. The next item of survival equipment we're going to look at is the open lifeboat. The first stage in preparing a lifeboat for launching is to check that the harbour pins are not in place. They should not be in place at sea, but always double check. Then two crewmen get into the lifeboat. They replace the drain plugs. Even if the gripes are in place, it is safer if the crew wear life jackets. They check that the tricing pennants are secure and that the lifelines are ready. If necessary, the lifelines are released. Bowsing tackles or frapping lines are checked and made ready. The toggle painter or sea painter is then rigged. One end should be secured around a strong point up forward in the boat. The other end is passed inboard of the forward fall, taken forward and secured to the ship's side as low as possible. Alternatively, the toggle painter may be rigged once the lifeboat is at the embarkation deck. On some ships, the painter is permanently rigged. At the embarkation deck level, the handrails are cleared and the embarkation ladder lowered. Clear away the gripes. Once the crew members have left the lifeboat, the gripes that secure it to the davits are released and cleared. Depending on national regulations and the design of the ship, it may be necessary for the two crew members to stay in the lifeboat as it descends to the embarkation deck. Lower away. Lower away. Checking that the winding handle is not in place, the lifeboat is lowered with great care using the winch brake. The crew member takes his orders from the person in charge of lowering. It is important not to let the falls overrun as the tricing pennants are not strong enough to support the weight of the lifeboat. Their sole purpose is to bring it into the ship's side. If visibility is restricted, then the crew member must be guided by the person in charge of lowering. Once at the embarkation deck, the bowsing in tackles are made fast to the correct eye bolts on the deck at each end of the lifeboat. They're then heaved tight. The tricing in pennants are now released together. While this is being done, and if there is time and personnel, supplies of blankets and extra water, as well as the SART and EPIRB, are loaded. The bridge is informed that the lifeboat is ready for boarding. Deputy Captain, boat preparation party. Yes, go ahead. That's number one boat, bounced in, ready for embarkation. Roger, I'll send up the first group of passengers to you now then. Roger. If the lifeboat has an air-cooled engine, this should now be started. Water-cooled engines, which must be able to run for five minutes out of the water, are normally started immediately before the lifeboat is lowered from the embarkation platform. Once the order to board has been received from the bridge, the crew assists the evacuees into the lifeboat. The crew members ensure that the occupants sit as low as possible in the boat and that their weight is evenly distributed. 
Proper leadership is vital in any emergency or survival situation. The coxswain must make it clear to everyone that he is in charge. It is best if this is established before the lifeboat enters the water. When everyone has been accounted for in the lifeboat, the bridge is informed. Bridge, boat preparation party. Escape, boat preparation party. That's number one lifeboat, all passengers in crew and bark, permission to launch. Go ahead, uh, boat preparation party, lower and send away the boat. Once the order to abandon the ship has been given by the captain, the coxswain orders the bowsing tackles to be eased out and cast off. Having first made sure that the water is clear below, the coxswain orders the winch operator to lower the boat. The winch operator remains on the ship to operate the handbrake. The lifeboat descends on the falls. In the lifeboat, the crew ensure that all are safe. Everyone must be sitting down and clear of the falls. All hands and arms must be kept in board, and any children are cuddled up low in the lifeboat. The falls must be released as soon as the lifeboat enters the water. Usually, the lifeboat will have to stay alongside until the last man comes down the ladder. The method of entering the water is determined by the state of the sea and the lifeboat's release gear. The decision is made before lowering. In calm conditions, a lifeboat like this, with offload release gear, should be let run for the final three meters, keeping the brake open. The boat will then plunge and overhaul the falls sufficiently for them to be unhooked. In a seaway, or in rougher conditions, with offload release gear, there is a danger that only one fall will be released. To avoid this, the boat should hit the water on or just after the crest of a wave. It is then allowed to drop into the next trough with the brake open. This way, the boat will overhaul the falls so that when it rises on the next wave, the coxswain gives the order, let go the falls. If the lifeboat has two separate release mechanisms, every effort should be made to release both together. In all cases, occupants should take care to avoid the swinging fall blocks. To get away from the ship, if it is stopped in the water, the bowman bears off with the boat hook. If necessary, the toggle painter can be passed aft and hauled on. If the ship still has headway, the coxswain puts the tiller towards the ship's side and once clear, gives the order, let go the toggle painter. Once in the water, the skates should be retained and only removed when the abandoned ship has sunk. It is possible that the situation will improve and you may want to reboard your ship. Once the lifeboat is in the water, the coxswain should steer to a safe distance from the abandoned ship, taking into account all prevailing circumstances. This is probably upwind and clear of the bow and stern. All survival craft, and especially those that are motor-powered, must keep a good lookout for any survivors in the water. Once you have congregated with other survival craft and streamed the sea anchor, the priorities are, first, protection against exposure, secondly, helping the rescue services to locate you by keeping a good lookout and using the radio, and thirdly, conserving water supplies. The issues of survival in lifeboats and life rafts are thoroughly explored in the fourth video in this series, Survival. Consult the training manual on your vessel and take every opportunity to participate in all training courses and onboard drills or exercises. Watch this video again. Remember, no one is a survivor until they have been rescued. Thank you.